Hey everybody, Chris Petri here. Welcome. Hey, we're going to have a fantastic time painting this gorgeous cityscape scene. We have a nice archway here, nice cool green blue colors with some warm uh, reds and gold colors. The color scheme is real beautiful. You can kind of see that, how gorgeous that looks. We have some, you know, cerulean blues. We have some viridian green. We have some burnt siennas, burnt umbers, French ultramarine blue. We have lots of cool colors, darks, some nice beautiful darks in here, some darks for our figures. We're doing figure painting here a little bit. We're doing a grouping of figures in this archway. So this is just a real fun painting. We, uh, All of you can do this painting. It's uh, for beginners, intermediate, or even expert watercolor artists. You can all do this. Um, maybe you can try this in a large format, maybe on a really large sheet of paper. Uh, some of you might want to do this on even a smaller format than this. This is like a 6x10 format but uh, here we're just looking at it and we're look you know looking at the scene and saying this is a real pleasant positive pleasing composition of really bright light in a cityscape type scene and then we have that gorgeous counterplay of the archway where we're in the interior underneath a passageway in another building where it's all cool under here and there's a passageway going into the light so it's a real dramatic type painting this is just so much fun. Have a great time with this one. We're going to cover it every step of the way. We're going to show you how we can create this painting very simply, just uh, one, one step at a time. It's a glazing technique, so a glazing pr approach. And um, we'll have lots of fun doing it. So just join along with us here, and we'll uh, be working for the next hour to get this painting done, and we'll have a, a great time at it. Okay, so we'll get started in just a second with the drawing. All right, everyone, Chris Petra here. Thanks so much again for another uh, wonderful time we're going to have here doing some painting. We're going to, uh, drawing and painting, we're going to actually do some figure work here. We're going to do a couple of figures within a uh, archway, perhaps in a city type scene. So this is sort of like a cityscape uh, type painting with some figures, a wonderful um, type of painting to do. You can create this. If you're new to watercolor, you can do this. If you're an intermediate painter that you you know been doing it a couple of years or so, this is something you can tackle no problem. And of course, if you're an old pro, you know you're just going to have a wonderful time with this one and and enjoy it. Maybe you're going to wind up framing and and uh, matting and framing this. And I, I I hope everyone, whether you're just starting out as a beginner or if you've been painting a while, please when you're doing your exercises like this and we're doing our compositions, if it comes out pretty good find a mat for it, go to the store, find a mat, get a frame for it, put it in a frame, hang it up on the wall, lean it up against the wall near where you uh, where you're working with your watercolors if you're you know at a desk area or just put a mat on it and 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 uh, tape a mat on top of it and then pin it up to your wall, tape it on your wall. Be excited about your watercolors, have fun with it and, and be mindful that you're, you're, you're having victories all the time, you just don't realize it. That's the thing about watercolor. When you're painting watercolors, you're always having victories. Every time you sit down and do an exercise, a composition, a practice run, those are successes. Those are victories. You just have to realize that over time, those victories get better and better, and then eventually you're painting the way you want to paint and you're really happy with it. In the beginning, you're going to be a little frustrated here and there. Everyone is. When I first started, I had tons of frustration, tons of unhappiness, thinking to myself, I'll never get there. I'll never be able to paint well, draw well, all those things. I go through this. I, go, I still go through that same idea in other ways. But when I first started, absolutely, I had those thoughts of like, this is not going good. I, I can't do it. It doesn't look good. But just instead of that, make it a victory. If you have a good composition that comes out good, let's say you do this one and it comes out halfway decent, no problem. Put a mat on it. You know, you go to the store. You go to the store. They have these pre-made pre mats, right, in the plastic. The big box stores that have all the, uh, you know, um, fabric and, and crafts, arts and crafts stuff. You get these plastic and you find one that fits over your painting, you bring your painting right to the store, you bring your watercolor painting right to the store, if it's raining out, you put it in a, in a bag, a Ziploc bag or a shopping bag, so it doesn't get wet, 
you bring it to the store, you find one of these that looks good, that fits over it. You try a few out, different sizes, you see one that fits it just right, and you purchase this. And then if you have to, you trim down your painting so that it fits this. You can leave it right in your bag. You can flip it around so that this type of stuff here is on the back. And you have a painting with a mat around it in a plastic cover. And you can pin this up on your wall anywhere you want. You can, you know, leave it at your, if, you, if you're working, you can leave it at your desk at work, whatever it is. Just enjoy the victories when you have a good painting. You know, find a good mat for it, put it in a plastic jacket, or if, you know, one of these plastic covers with the mat around it. And uh, also, if it comes out fantastic, also, hey, get a frame for it too. So get a mat and a frame, and frame it, hang it up somewhere, in your house, in your place, at work, wherever, do it. Enjoy those victories, because you're gonna have good paintings as you go. And don't get frustrated, you just keep going and going and going and going. Okay, we're starting out here and you saw the finished painting just a second ago so you're kind of up to speed you saw the finished painting now we're just going to draw this scene so I'm going to get my pencil here and uh, we're going to do some figures in an archway and we're just going to have a fun time of it so I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to take the, the wall like so. That'll be one wall here. So I'm just making a light marking on my paper. Maybe I'll turn this down a bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm just making a few lines just to start out with. I'll start drawing darker so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, just bear with me here. I'm just trying to get my lines all set up, you know, my preliminary sketch. So when you're going to do a drawing like this, you start off with your preliminary sketch. Get it going with a very, very light, 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 super light sketch with your pencil. And then once you kind of see that it's coming along good and it, it looks like everything's in the right spot, then you're going to go over with a darker line, just so you don't lose it as you're going through. All right, and then... Um, I'm just going to do some figures here, just so I get the kind of general idea here.
Okay, I'm just kind of going through my progressions here, getting my figures somewhat set up. And remember, this is again a figure painting with a cityscape, you know, so it's a cityscape with some figures. You can do this. This is not a complex type of painting. This is very easy. All you have to do is just uh, keep your eye on the um, overall design idea, which is just an archway with some figures in the archway. And the rest should be kind of simple. There's some really good darks in here, so you'll be able to draw those fine. And again, I always mention, please, please, please work from my finished watercolor painting. So you'll see it in the beginning of the video, my finished watercolor painting. Work from that. If you want to work from this drawing, that's fine too. Wait till I'm finished with this drawing, and then you can work from the finished drawing, and then, you've, and then you work from the finished painting, either at the end of the video or the beginning of the video. You'll see the finished painting. That's the best way to get the best results you can from my uh, channel here, from my, my painting and my tutorials. Um, so that's just really an important thing to keep in mind. I know everyone likes to work a little different. If you have to do a if you have to work uh, in a way that's different than what I say is the best, that's fine too. You're the artist, you have to kind of make your own decisions on how you work with things, but at this point in time I'm doing an improvisational painting here, so I can't really say, here I have a photograph, let me put it on the phone or the, you know, screen and say this is what I'm working from. I'm improving this, I'm drawing it, create, you know, doing some creative ideas, so the only way I can say you'll be able to copy this or, or work from this is to actually work from the finished painting. Does that make sense? So I hope you'll just, you know, bear with me on that one. Try to work from the finished painting. You'll have good success doing it that way, trust me. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and do the final drawing, the contour drawing. But before I do that, I will take a quick break and I'll always mention too that uh, please uh, you know, feel free, subscribe right down here below on the right hand side. There's that red subscribe button on YouTube. If you subscribe to my channel, you're going to get great content every week, new videos, all new content every time. We're doing all types of subject matter in watercolor. We're doing figure painting, streetscapes, landscapes, ocean, seascapes, boats, figures, flowers. We do it all here, watercolor, everything. So have a fun time with it. And the more you watch, the better you're going to get. Because every time you watch one of my videos, you're going to pick up on all those methods and techniques that I use. And even if you're not going to paint it, draw and paint along with us, you're still going to pick up those methods, techniques, and processes that we use here. And if you do that, it's going to be a strong impression in your mind, and you'll be able to remember it a lot more when you're working. So when you're doing your paintings, it's going to be a lot easier for you to sort of use the techniques and methods that we use here on this channel if you're seeing it all the time and you're absorbing it as you're watching it. So if you're watching it all the time constantly, you're going to pick it up, you know, you're going to be able to pick up on it more and you'll be able to use it more as you're painting and you're drawing and painting when you're doing your 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 artwork. So that's why I say please subscribe so you you can watch all the time and you'll be alerted each time our new video comes out. You'll be able to see it and watch it and have a great time of it. And um, even if you're just watching and you don't paint, I'm glad you're joining along. I appreciate everyone that watches here on my channel. Thank you all for watching and uh, joining along with us. And I really appreciate that. And I appreciate all the great comments and kind words that everyone does send to me each week as I do my videos. That makes means a lot to me and uh, helps me to stay strong and encouraged to keep painting and drawing and, and staying on YouTube to do these videos. So I want to thank you for that. Okay, so I'll be right back in just a minute. Okay, we're starting back up again. We're going to do our contour drawing. We're going to get started. We've already done our preliminary sketch. So we have some preliminary lines down. We did our preliminary drawing. We got the archway. This is a cityscape scene with some figures. We did the preliminary sketch. Now we're going to go in and do the final drawing. So I'm going to go in and just do the darker lines. And I think you'll be happy with this. You'll see that we get our we're going to There we go, there's the archway. 
and we just have some lines here. We have the archway. There we go. We have the archway. Like that. stone work here. We got the key keyway over the top. <clears throat> and what else do we have here? We have this here. Some stones along there. <coughs> okay, so we are really in good shape here. We have We have a doorway there. This turns in a little bit. And then here we have another, another doorway here. And a window. Okay. So now I'm going to do our figures. So our figures are here. They're along the archway. There's some women here. They're shopping. They're chatting. They're having a fun time shopping together. They're kind of maybe just about to start shopping, perhaps. And they're talking about where they're going to go, what they're going to do. Perhaps there's a young woman here, too. She's joining along. They're having a good time here. This is a streetscape painting. And um, so it's all about having fun. It's the city feel. There's shopping. There's stores, cars, all kinds of interesting things going on. And I'm doing some of the buildings in the distance over here. So I'm just making some lines here, just for reference points as I paint. And uh, we're going to do some windows on this building here. We'll keep this abstract. We're not going to make this too... a building in the distance here. This is kind of light. Um, I, I'm not going to go tremendously dark with all of my uh, Okay. Alright, so we have pretty much our um, overall drawing is complete. We're going to take another break um, and then we'll come back and we'll start painting. And this is going to be a painting where um, we're going to kind of, uh, we're going to do the glazing technique. We're going to glaze over this first with a light wash, harmonize the whole entire watercolor paper, 
And then as we let that dry, we'll start going back in and adding some of our darker washes to uh, finish up the painting. So this is really a kind of a simple one-two type of process. One is get the first wash on there, that real beautiful light wash of all the different colors we're going to mix in there. Where you're going to see it's going to be a beautiful, nice warm feel, nice warm stones and warm sunny day. And then once we're done with that wash, when that dries, we will come back. Be right back. Okay, we're back and we're in business. We've got our uh, contour drawing completed. So we have our nice archway here, beautiful cityscape with some figures. Um, we're going to get started with our washes. So the first thing I'll do is I'll empty out my water bucket. I'm always practicing good technique here, good methods with my painting. Fresh clean water, empty the water bucket. Let's get some uh, spritzer bottle. Let's clean up our palette. We don't want to use all that muddy looking color from our last painting. Spritz our paints a little bit, get those reactivated. Paper towels to clean up the palette. This goes really quick. That's all you have to do. One, two, three, and it's done. Let's make sure we try to keep a clean palette. This way we can keep our colors nice and fresh and clean looking. There we go. Okay, so what we said was we were going to do a, a wash over the entire painting. And this would be the glazing technique where we're going light to dark. So our first wash is going to be a light wash of color with lots of water. Give it that nice beautiful watercolor feeling. And then once that dries 100%, then we start going back in and doing our figures and final details. And you'll kind of see how this is really going to look fantastic as we go. The only thing I think I would do here is I might take a, an eraser and maybe lighten up a few lines. You know, I might take, just erase a few lines here and there, just like that. Just to soften it up a little bit. It kind of looks harsh when you have tons of dark pencil lines. So let me do that. Now again, we're gonna, we said we're gonna make this a, a warm painting, a warm feel. It's a warm sunny day. Warm and cool though. We're gonna add some cool colors to this. We're not just gonna go all warm. We'll use cooler colors in the distance. So let's say we're gonna do the warmer colors in more of the center area. Maybe some cooler in the distance over here in the very, very center of the painting and some cooler colors here inside of the archway because this is like an archway where it's underneath the buildings so this is like we're kind of inside of a uh, a passageway going through and we're looking out into the outside city area the cityscape we're looking out into the cityscape and right now we're like walking underneath like a, a walkway underneath a group of buildings and there's an archway here so we're sort of in a cooler area so let's kind of capture that feeling let's do that so let's start out even as we say let's start out cooler so we have cerulean blue that's going to be a nice cool color some viridian green that's another cool green like that and then we want to add in some warm raw sienna yellow ochre even. We want to keep that warm feeling going too, mixing up the warm and cool. And the first thing we're going to do is take that fresh clean water and just put a, a light wash on the entire painting, the entire watercolor paper. So just get the water on there, light wash, not too heavy. Don't flood your watercolor table where you're working. Just add a light wash of moisten the paper. That's all you want to do. Moisten the paper with a light coating of clean fresh water. That's all you have to do. Woohoo! That's it. Look at that. All done. There you go. Now since you have all that water on there, that's going to really make this look wonderful. Look, 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 look. Cool up here. Green. Okay. 
get those colors on there. It's going to dry lighter, don't forget that now. Always remember, watercolor dries lighter, so go darker than you think. If you think you want to go middle middle tones, then get that on there dark, because it's going to dark. It's going to dry darker half. Half is it's going to dry lighter. Right? It's going to dry. So what we're doing is we're trying to create the effect of like coolness in this archway like that and warmth more warmth out there in the street area where it's sunny and there's the hot sun raking down on the scene this is the have fun with it there we go we can even go a little darker there on the sides maybe a little bit of purple let's get some purple in there shadowy colors the nice purple colors on the sides over here to make it a little darker again it's going to dry a lot lighter the light is going to shine on the ground so we leave that maybe a little bit of brown in there a little bit of brown just to gray it up a little bit gray it up a little bit with a little bit of brown burnt umber like that have fun with this while you're working with your big brush it's a flat brush then we're going to even get a little darker here We're going to go with a little darker wash around the underside of the archway. Like that. I rinse off my brush. Add a little bit of damp brush to this just to thin things out. Now, final touches for our wash here. We take a tissue and we blot up here. Look at that! See that? You can take your tissue. If you have to get a new one, get a new one because you don't want to keep going over with a uh, tissue that has all kinds of schmutz on it. Get a new one. There you go. And then you get the light shining through that archway. Perfect. Look at that. Okay, not too much now. That's what you have to do. You have to be careful not to keep going over and over and over. Leave good enough alone. There we go. Let this dry 100%. So that's all we have to do now. You get that darker, cool wash with the greens, the blues. Let that all mellow out and dry 100%. If you want, you can also add uh, some, or you can actually blow dry this and let it dry quicker, or you can let it dry naturally. I'm going to let this dry naturally. I'm going to take a dinner break and have some raviolis and I'll be back and we'll finish up with our figures and our distant buildings, the light, we're going to see some gorgeous light effects here. This is going to be this sunny streetscape scene here, look at that. The light is shining through the tunnel here, through the archway, It's the sun, the bright light is shining on the ground here on the sidewalk. So we have really we've accomplished a lot so far and we and it was really simple was it not was this not simple 
we got the drawing done. That was the main thing we had to do in the beginning when we started. But then once we did that, how simple was this? We just flooded the paper with lots of water. And then we just started adding our cool colors, our greens and blues. So we did viridian green, cerulean blue. And then we just added a little bit of uh, raw umber, raw sienna to mix in a little bit of worms with the cool colors. And then we use some burnt umber just to make some darker areas around the archway here. Just so that it's got a little bit of a darker feel. We can even go in now while it's still damp. And we can get some more of that arch with the darker. Like that. with a round brush. There we go, that's all we need to do. And you can do this while it's still damp. If you're careful and don't worry about it, it's going to dry it's going to dry and mellow out And you can do a little bit of darks over here. There we go. You can do a few little additional areas of interest while it's still damp. But I think that's it. That's, that's pretty much what we want to do. Maybe I'll do that key stone there. I'll just lift up a little bit of paint. Add a little bit back in there. Okay. Again, not too much though. Let this dry 100%. And you will see that it'll be much easier to work once you let this dry 100%. Okay. Okay, we're going to let this dry. Then we'll come back and we'll finish up with our figures and our distant buildings here in the light. Gorgeous streetscape painting with figures. A wonderful archway, a cool archway. And um, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back and we're going to actually finish up this painting. Let's have an enjoyable time here um, finishing up. So we're going to have some burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt sienna. We'll keep like a nice warm and cool theme going with our darks here. And then we're just going to start creating our our figures here and they're going to actually blend together. Let's keep these all blended together so you'll see I'm going to go right straight through all the figures just like so so that you can see how I'm blending them all together and then I'm going to just go up top and they're pretty much in shadow we're, we're painting into the light so we're not really we're painting into the light and we're going to try to do a little bit of raw umber there too let's get some warm and cool some red maybe a little bit of cadmium red 
let's try to let's try to warm and cool things as we go. A little bit more light on the tops of the heads. And we try to mix it up. Burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Do the feet. Now I There we go. Okay, so we've kind of blended all those figures together. That looks good. This is more of a fun type painting. We're not going to be trying to get every last detail in here and there. We're just going to We could add some water to the tops of the figures. The shoulders and the heads. And we can actually lift up a little bit of paint with a, with a tissue. Just to give a little more light. Like that. There we go. We can use a little bit of We can, we can use some, maybe these are, are dark here, we got some, there we go, so we should, we have a little bit of flesh showing here on the faces, on a few of the figures. And then we're going to do some shadowing. That's all. We just do a little... And then we just try to do do some shapes that look, you know, that represent the the figures with the heads, like so. That looks good. It's a little darker at the base. Maybe toward the middle it's a little darker, actually. Because you have a lot of light there shining through where the legs are. So, I think that's okay. Maybe a little bit of warm. A little bit of cool, a little bit of green. Meridian green. So mix in some different colors in the shadows. And so we just let it run out of the paper. It looks good to run off that paper with the shadows. Like so. That looks preferable than leaving it a blob. A blob sitting in the middle here, run it right off the paper. That looks much better. That I can say. And what else can we do? Let's get our <clears throat> buildings with a little shadow, a little bit of. Um, I think the best thing to do here now is to clean the palette. So I get a paper towel and I'm just going to wipe up the palette a little bit here, get some clean working area. Then I'm going to go in with some cerulean blue. Cerulean blue, maybe some raw sienna. Maybe we'll do a light wash, like so. Like that. A little bit of cool, a little bit of cerulean blue. 
you can leave a little bit of light over the top here. Then we're going to go in with a little more blue, maybe some cobalt, change up the tonal value, maybe a little purple, like that. That looks pretty good. We can lift up a little bit with the tissue. A little bit of warm colors here. And we'll just do a little bit of warm colors here. Maybe there's this building across the way here. Like that. There we go. And remember, we're having fun here. This is a painting you want to just have fun with it enjoy it you know you're doing some really cool shapes and shadow colors with the greens and the blues you're having fun doing the bright sunlight out here in the sunlight in the street scene area the streetscape scene you're doing some figures you're having fun with your darks here we're just homogenizing all these figures together in one uh, grouping and fusing them all together some red, cadmium red for the faces on a few. So a few are facing this way, a few are maybe looking the other way. So you have a mixture of things, counter uh, positioning, so that we have some different looks, you know, some figures looking this way, some figures looking the other way. We have the nice shadowing here. And we said we would run the shadowing off the picture, off the painting. That's preferable than leaving just a blob underneath the, sh the um, figures. That looks better. It kind of just like sort of anchors the shadows into the, the um, outer edges of your, your painting. So we kind of try to look at things and see what's going to be better. Take some, um, take some uh, steps to um, make things look better. We make some decisions. Sometimes when you're painting, you just have to make some decisions as you go. No big deal. You know, if it doesn't turn out perfect, you remember for the next time to do something a little different. And uh, so we're just going to do some warm and cool cerulean blue under here. French ultramarine blue and some burnt umber. We're going to do some windows. So this is a distant building. You don't, we don't need to do any details other than just a couple little hash marks for our um, windows. We have some we'll do some lines here, just some markings to uh, make things look a little more interesting. And so you add some of those markings that bring some excitement into the picture. And we'll do the same over here. We'll do some more windows up here. Just some indications, nothing, you know, too. Just like that. Some cerulean blue. Have some more windows up here. And I think that's really looking fine. Maybe a little darker dark up here with some uh, French ultramarine blue just to give us that. So now we'll do a little bit of darker darks in here under the archway. 
Um, I maybe I'll get a larger brush. Number six or number eight. Round brush. Burnt umber. Raw sienna. French ultramarine blue. And maybe we'll just add a couple, maybe some green. Maybe we'll add some we'll add some shadow areas here. And maybe this is a doorway. There we go. We have a little doorway there. Now, how can we make that even more interesting? We could take our, uh, we could take a new tissue, and then maybe we can kind of blot in a little bit of some light in there. There we go. We add some light there. Some warm and some cool burnt sienna. Maybe we have another French ultramarine blue burnt umber. Maybe we have another doorway here. Like that. So you can add in some darks to make things more interesting in this area here on the uh, along the sides of the picture. We can add some 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 worms in there. And some yellow ochre maybe. Then all we do is blend it in, put it on the paper. Blend it in a little bit. A little more burnt sienna. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. Then maybe we can get a dark here. There we go. Just to add a little more interest there. So we have a little bit of this. We can do this. Burn umber, burn sienna, French ultramarine blue. And we can do that. We can actually create a little more excitement here. So all we're doing is adding a little more darks to this. And a few darks here and there. A 
And I think that's good. So let's leave it there. Let's take off the tape. And I can tell you that it's going to look really much better when we remove the tape here. We'll have a, basically a border around our painting, just like a mat. We're having a like we're placing a mat over our painting so that it looks finished. And we'll see how it looks now that it's sort of framed out. And I think that's looking very good. So here we've done a really interesting painting where we used the glazing technique. We used lots of light and dark in this picture. It's really a streetscape with some figures. Um, just a real creative type painting. You can do this. Give it a try. You can go with a lighter feel. Maybe I went dark. I like the darks here. I think the darks look really good. It really kind of, to me, it makes it look really um, like a very strong composition with the really, really dark darks along here and over the arch and on the side here with this doorway and the figures, so that kind of really makes it a, a nice painting where everything is sort of balanced. You have a lot of darks and you have a lot of medium tones and you have a little bit of the bright light here over here and you have some decent bright lights along here. But overall it looks like a good painting. I'm happy with this, very happy. I hope you'll try this again and um, we're going to see you on the next video and again please if you haven't subscribed please subscribe below. On the right hand side here you'll see that subscribe button if you hit subscribe. We're, we're, we're creating videos every week. Every week new paintings just like this. We're doing streetscapes and figures, flower paintings. We do uh, boat paintings, seascapes, landscape paintings with lots of trees and mountains. We do everything here and uh, I'm really hoping you'll come by uh, week after week, month after month, and year after year. You'll get better at your watercolors, I guarantee it, because we cover all the basics every time we pick up our brushes and our pencils and our paper and our paints. We're just covering the same things each week and this way you'll always be familiar with the process of how we're painting and drawing and creating our paintings and I believe you definitely will benefit from that. So I'm hoping you're going to stick with us here, join along with us every week and if you hit that subscribe button again you'll be alerted when we make a new video and you'll join right along with us and if maybe some weeks you just want to take a break, no problem. You come back the next week and you maybe pick up your paints again and your uh, brushes and pencils. Uh, in any case, we're having a lot of fun here. Hope you're enjoying this uh, and hope you really had a fun time on this video and I'm sure your paintings are looking beautiful and we'll see you on the next video.